You know, once upon a time, beloved, because we lived a certain way, Islam or our way of life, because you know, you know, people are familiar with that scripture in the Holy Quran where it says, This day have I completed my favor on you and chosen for you Islam as a religion. But we're taught in the teachings, whether we really understand it or not, that Islam isn't a religion. Islam is a whole way of life. You know, do you not understand what religion is, beloved? The Muslims go to the mosque on Friday and get very, very holy. Then they leave the mosque and go back to their off license. Selling alcohol and cigarettes and other contaminants to the house of God. And on the top shelf of their news agents is dirty magazines. Pornography, which they sell to the public. But on Friday at Juma, everybody is holy. The Christians, they go to the church on Sunday morning. And beloved, in that church, they would never dream of uttering a swear word. But for the rest of the week, beloved, what pours out of that orifice in their face? The Jews go to the synagogue on Saturday and they get holy beloved. But <laughs> for the rest of the week in Hollywood and in these other publications that they're responsible for, all hell breaks loose. In the nation of Islam, we ain't into no religion, beloved. Where we practice righteousness in a moment and then the rest of the time it's madness and mayhem. No, in the nation of Islam, beloved, this has to be 24 hours, 7 days a week. We have to be what we say we are. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, look man, I don't say something behind the door that I don't say in the public. Do you understand how important that is? To have that kind of mentality, that kind of lifestyle? I want to be a Muslim. My resolve for 2019 is to be a Muslim. Do you know what a Muslim is, beloved? A Muslim is one who submits his or her will entirely. Stop. Stop there, man. Do you know what entirely means, beloved? See, because some of us grew up on Saturday afternoon wrestling. Yeah, I'm one of them. Mick McManus. Masambula. There was a brother who used to headbutt people. Johnny Quango. <laughs> Look, beloved. In wrestling, the wrestler gets into a, a, a headlock or whatever and in modern parlance in the cage they tap out, right? You know, I submit. And then you release them and they go back to fighting you again. See, that's, if that's what we think submitting our will to do the will of God is, then beloved, we are in a delusional place. See, to submit our will, it's not to submit on Sunday morning in the church, Friday afternoon 
at Juma Prayer, Saturday at the synagogue. To submit our will to do the will of God means that we have to resolve once and for all that not my will but thy will be done. Now, what kind of God is it that we believe in, beloved? Because some of us are still very spooky. Some of us, just the mention of God we're looking up. God ain't up there, beloved. But we've been so seasoned and so conditioned over a long time. And see, unless we are humble, first and foremost, you know, and this is a thing, you know, this is a thing, believe me. Uh, Jamaican, I'm a Jamaican. And I'm always telling Jamaicans, man, that one of the first things we have to do as Jamaicans, we have to learn to humble ourselves. Because Jamaicans, don't, they're not humble people. Jamaicans with me know that I read it, man. Show what I said, me know that I read it. But just that statement alone eliminates all learning. If you know it already, nobody can't tell you nothing. There has to be humility in order to put yourself in the classroom of God. Look, do you know how many men, it's very difficult for men, see like I'm standing here, I'm talking, do you know the way your average man thinks when another man stands in front of him and teaches the way I'm teaching? They're not thinking, boy, yeah, really looking into that word and submitting to that word. They're looking at the man who is teaching and thinking, I could do that. Who does he think he is? Jeez, it's the wrong spirit. It's not about the man. It is about the word. But we are so ego driven that we'll spend most of our time just looking at the man. Sizing him up. Is he for real or what? See, we, we can't even hear the word. Because we're distracted by thinking about that other person's personality. But believe it or not, beloved, so even when we come to the front here to do this, believe it or not, <laughs> we have to really strive hard. It's a difficult thing to do, but beloved, you have to empty yourself of yourself. And allow the word, allow yourself to be a channel for the word. Because do you know what the mission of all of the student ministers is in the nation of Islam? The mission is a very simple mission, beloved. Give a clear, unambiguous word. No ambiguity, no complication, no personality, no idiosyncratic elements of your own life thrown into the teachings. Just a clear word. So that a baby, one of the small children in the room listening, they can hear, they can, that makes sense. Mathematics, it adds up. And even the children might determine, you know what, boy, I want to I, I be a part of this. Children will be inspired by it, beloved. Yes, and old people who were at that point in their life where they're thinking, yeah, we just want to retire. They become re-energized and say, no, I, I want to be a part of this. Because he came to give life and life in more abundance. And so... You can't do that if it's just, if we're driven by ego, either from the platform speaking or sitting in the audience, but we 
can't hear the word because we're too busy looking at the personality. Do you understand what I'm saying? All praise is due to Allah. So, beloved, I want to be a Muslim. And even though our nature is Muslim and our nature is God, because we've forgotten having been subjected to a satanic mind for at least 400 years, at least, but you've got to understand that he's been here for 6,000 years, and one way or the other, he's been affecting humanity. We have forgotten, and so we need to be reminded. And one way to do this, beloved, is through the process called prayer. And for whatever reason, some of us really struggle with prayer. And then when we hear five prayers a day, oh my God, you will you try to kill me? No, beloved. When the Prophet originally went to Allah in that holy place and received instructions about the prayers, I think he came back with in excess of 50 prayers a day. <laughs> you know, I heard um, Floyd Mayweather one day in an interview and he said this I think the interviewer asked him about God or something or about his lifestyle or his belief system or whatever and in one of the comments that Floyd Mayweather made he was just talking a lot of talk different things about boxing and money and whatever because he's money Mayweather and so you can get distracted by all of that if you want to but what jumped out at me what I heard him say in one of his responses during this interview was he said to the interviewer I pray to God every moment of every day that's what jumped out Floyd Mayweather and I said wow see beloved before I drive my car I pray what, what do we say we say oh Allah please guide us to our destination safely and oh Allah please return us safely when we go into the house we say oh Allah please grant my entry and my exit every time is that true Aziza my daughter is in the house before we drink or eat say in the name of Allah the beneficent the most merciful oh Allah please bless the food I'm about to consume may it nourish me and sustain me thank you oh Allah for the teachings and how to eat to live Nothing goes in here without those words. Nothing. Beloved, when you find yourself in a crisis, what's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? Is it FNL? <laughs> I want you to think about this, beloved. You'd be surprised. Do you know that we can get to a stage, get to a point where there isn't even a crisis? Things will happen, things happen in life. But do you know, beloved, that, you know, because I see us on social media and I've heard people even saying, you know, because like when you're on the social media, I, 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 by the grace of Allah, there's a lot of videos out there of your brother. And um, when I get a little chance sometimes, I do read some of the comments and some of the things that people have to say. And... <laughs> 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 I 
a woman wrote <laughs> one, of, one of the lectures that was on the social media, a woman wrote dickhead in relation to myself. No, no, but hold on, hold on. But you see, beloved, I'm laughing because when I read it, that I'm laughing, beloved. Because I'm saying to myself, why would you even take something like that serious? How could you be so ego driven that that could hurt your feelings? It don't hurt me, beloved. People are entitled to say what they want. Beloved, I've read, I've read high praise of myself on them. But equally, then am I going to then not be able to leave the room because my head is so big that I can't get through the door, beloved? Or can we be sufficiently balanced whereby the praise don't affect us because we say all the praise is due to Allah? Or the criticism equally can't affect us because it's not our ego is not involved in this. This is not a vanity trip. This has got to do with the revealed word of God. And you taking up the responsibility to give it clearly to the best of your ability. And in the nation of Islam, what do we say? Take it. That's it, beloved. And having that confidence. Prayer, beloved. Critically, critically important. And Fajr prayer. Why is that one so important, beloved? first thing in the morning it's because there is a scripture that says prayer is better than sleep listen to the language it didn't say prayer is best it says prayer is better than sleep sleep is good for you beloved do you know that we need sleep and do you know that we should all get a good sleep? And do you know that a lot of us don't sleep well or don't sleep enough? And if we continue to have bad sleep and not enough sleep, we can't actually function during the working hours. We're doing damage to ourselves if we don't sleep well. But even though sleep is good, prayer is better and so when we wake up from sleep and go into prayer that's awesome that one is looked on with a lot of kudos you get good kudos for that and say so i'm saying you're getting kudos but spook god spook god spook god spook god the kudos is still coming from within see beloved you know when you're tired you know when you're stressed you know when you're weak you know when you get up in the morning and you know you're just sluggish but then you find yourself going to prayer see there's nothing greater that you can do for yourself than to make yourself feel good and proud of yourself it's pleasing to Allah it's pleasing to the God within that you would sacrifice that good sleep in order to address him who is closer to us than our jugular vein he said I'm near to you he hears all prayer and that one in the morning, he hears that one big time, beloved. 